Door knocking is forever one of the hottest topics in real estate. And I can see why. I built my business in my first year using door knocking. I got over 50% of my listings. I closed two deals in my first week as being a real estate agent with door knocking. But there's things that you need to know. So in this video, I want to share the six truths about door knocking that you need to know before you get started. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Sherrard. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. If you love learning about online lead generation, prospecting, social media for real estate, business, mindset, and the like, please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss another video. Turn that little notification bell on, and please like this video if you do get value from it. So as mentioned in the introduction, guys, I did use door knocking to build my foundation as a real estate agent. The very first night, if you haven't heard my story, I went out door knocking in minus five in the snow, in the dark, and I got two listings around the six to $700,000 range my very first night. And from there, I continued to door knock over the course of my first year as a real estate agent, and I did get 50% of my listings from door knocking, and it did help catapult my business, but as well, give me credibility in the real estate industry, helping me land on podcasts and the like, as well as different blogs and YouTube channels. But there's certain things that you need to know about door knocking, because it's not all glory, it's not all fantastic, You can get extraordinary results if you do it properly, but I want to share six things that you need to know about door knocking before you get started so that you can get those fantastic results. The first thing is obvious, but I need to mention it. You will get rejected. You are going to get rejected nicely. You are going to get rejected savagely. I've had doors slammed on my face. I've been sworn at. I've had dogs put on me. I've had so many crazy situations happen, but you need to be aware of the fact that you're going to get rejected, not just sometimes, but a lot of times. But So if you're somebody that does take offense to rejection, make sure you brace yourself. But not only that, one tip that I'm going to share with you is that you need to go in with the mindset that you don't know what's happening behind that door. You don't know if the person behind that door just broke up with their significant other. Maybe they just lost their job. Maybe they just lost a loved one. Maybe something tragic happened in their life. So because of the fact that they're projecting anger and things like that on you, it doesn't mean that it's your fault for showing up at their door and door knocking them. It just means sometimes that either they're having a bad day, but don't take it personally. That's one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can share with you is that when you do get rejection, don't take it personally because you're just showing up at their door trying to provide value. So the fact that they're acting in that way doesn't mean it was a bad job on your part. It just means that sometimes life happens. So don't take it personally, but make sure you be prepared to get rejected constantly. The next thing I want to say is that the magic is in the follow-up. I get asked this so many times. I get calls on a weekly basis from real estate agents from across North America and Australia asking me, Mike, how long does it take to actually start seeing results when you door knock? You know, I did have a fortunate situation where my first night I did get a couple listings when I was door knocking, but that's far from the norm. Usually it takes months. Sometimes it even takes a year or more to convert someone from door knocking. So one of the things that I have to stress to you is that the magic is in the follow-up. I just recorded a video with an ISA or an inside sales agent who contacts Fizbo's expires and the like. And he was explaining the fact that his follow up plan, he sees the magic numbers between five and seven touch points and follow ups before he gets an appointment. So if you stop after the second, third, or fourth touch point in terms of, you know, revisiting them at the door, running a social media ad to get in front of them, sending them an email, giving them a call, or anything else like that, they're just going to go to the next agent that becomes top of mind to them. So if you don't stay top of mind, you're going to lose the business. So you need to make sure that you're prepared for the long haul. It's not a quick job. Sometimes you're going to come across people that it just happened to be the right time, the right place and everything aligns. But what you need to understand is that the magic is truly in the follow up. You need to create a plan to nurture the people after you get their contact information. And even if you don't get their contact information, you still need to find ways to get in front of them multiple times. So don't go into door knocking thinking that you're going to knock 
a hundred doors, you're going to get in front of 20 people and one of them is going to list with you. That's not commonly the case. It does happen, but the magic is in continuously getting in touch with them and finding ways to add value on a constant basis to the point where when the time is right for them, then you're going to be their go-to agent. Number three is practice is required. Despite me going out on my first night and knocking a bunch of doors and getting good results, I spent the six months before that practicing my scripts, role playing with other people, constantly rehearsing new objection handlers and things like that. Now, if you do want my door knocking scripts, comment below and I'll give you a free copy of them. But you need to be practicing because you are going to get hit with creative and new objections on a constant basis. So if you do go out door knocking and you get some objection handler that makes you a bit tongue tied, make sure you keep a mental note of it or write it down as you leave the property and start to find ways to handle that objection. So the next time when something similar comes up or the same one comes up, it doesn't tie you up. But you need to make sure that you're practicing honing your scripts and enhancing your communication skills because the ones that succeed aren't the ones with the best handouts. They aren't the ones with the best suit. It's the ones that can communicate the best. So as you start to elevate your communication skills, that's when you're going to start to see exceedingly exceptional results while you're out door knocking. Number four is location does matter. You need to be very aware of your market and you need to find locations that are going to be a good fit for you. One thing that I have to say is that in Calgary here, we're broken up into different quadrants and different quadrants have different demographics of people. And I've found that going into different price points and different styles of properties, sometimes the results aren't as good. So what I did is after doing some practice, I found some of the communities that do work well with me in the sense of the price point and the demographic and the style of property and the overall vibe of the community. So make sure you're paying close attention to the area as well as areas that have high turnover because I see so many agents that want to get into the, you know, the community that they've always dreamed of or the community that has million dollar properties. Yes, it's cool. Yes, it's sexy, but it's all about the numbers. We know that real estate's a numbers game. So your focus should be doing research on the MLS and looking what communities have high turnover rate. For us here, it's some of the communities that have a mid-range price point where it's new home buyers can afford the property, people are moving laterally if they want to move from a community next door to it, and people are moving down from bigger properties because the community has a lot to offer. So make sure you're a student of the market and make sure you're aware of where there's high turnover and where there's lots of sales. Because if you're going to a community just because you like it, but people are staying there and handing down properties to their children, you're not going to see very good results. But if you're going to a community where there's constantly a flow of new listings, just sold and the like, that's where you're going to start to see some traction because there's constant movement. And when you do get the listing, that means there's also going to be some attention on it as well. Number five is one of the most key pieces of advice that I can give you, which is focusing on the give, not the take. So many agents, I actually had received a call from an agent last week and he said, Mike, you know, I'm going to all these properties and my script is essentially to ask them, sorry, I don't know why I'm using a phone here. Um, my, my script is essentially going up and seeing if they're interested in selling within the next year. Well, then you're instantly opening up with something that's just ripe for rejection because largely the answer is going to be no, but you're all also opening the conversation with an ask or a take. I don't know if you guys have ever read Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. If you haven't, you should. But in that book, he talks about the jab, 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 which is the give, 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 give value, find ways to constantly give and provide value. And after you've provided enough value over time on a consistent and constant basis, that's when you can go in and ask for the take or something that you would like. So when you're door knocking, and you'll see this in my scripts, the mentality should always be show up and provide as much value as humanly possible about stats, about this listing that just happened down the road or the just sold 
sold or community stats or or a new open house or a new community event. Find ways when you're in front of the person at that door to not only make a good first impression based on your personality and your energy and your mannerisms and your communication, but also find ways to give value that they would actually care about. And then after you've steered the direction in the way of making that good first impression and bringing down their barriers a little bit, that's when you can maybe go in and ask after a couple pieces of value if they're interested in knowing the value of their home. But if you just go in with the mentality that you're going to ask and move on, you're going to get rejected and get no results. So make sure you find ways to provide value. There's so many different ways. I've got a ton of videos on it, so check out my playlist for that. But value comes first. Jab, 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 value, 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 and then go for the right hook and see if there's a way that you can get their email, phone number, name, or schedule an appointment. And the last thing, guys, is be prepared mentally, physically, And with what you bring, you need to be mentally prepared for the rejection. I'm not going to lie. Door knocking can suck. It can be terrible. Nobody wants to go out in a beautiful day like it is today where it's 31 degrees and sunny and go and sweat their ass off knocking a bunch of doors. But we need to do it in order to generate business. So you need to be mentally prepared that you are going to go out, you are going to get rejected, but there is opportunity that lies in the efforts you put forth. So be mentally prepared for what is going to happen. Be physically prepared in the terms of what you wear. Don't wear dress shoes that are hard on your feet. Make sure you wear something that's comfortable. Make sure you also dress for the occasion. Different demographics expect different types of people people that they're going to be working with. So if you are knocking in a million dollar community, make sure you dress it up a little bit. But if you are in a blue collar working class, you know, mid price point community, I like to wear a polo and shorts and just dress it down and relate to them. So be physically prepared. And finally, be prepared with what you bring. I talked in the previous one about value. You need to make sure that when you do have door hangers, you are bringing something of value that you can give to them. So those are my six tips, guys. Those are the things that you need to know, the raw, honest, real truth from my personal experience about door knocking. If you have any questions about door knocking, comment below. Otherwise, I'll send you my scripts in your comment. Please make sure you like this video, subscribe, and we will see you next time.